welcome to Build. I'm Ash Pertal, and we are coming to you live from London. On today's show, I'm joined by an actor who has had us glued to our screens as the stubborn investigator Julian Baptiste in The Missing. And he's now reprising the role for a new part, new six-part BBC drama. Please welcome Checky Cairo. <laughs> Welcome, welcome. Grab yourself a seat. Cup of tea is down there for you as well. Proper welcome here at Build. Okay. Checky, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much for the warm welcome. It is a warm welcome. And what warmer welcome than with a cup of tea? Perfect, perfect. You've been darting around the country all day today, haven't you? Sort of on the promo trial for Baptiste. Yes, we did. We were, uh, yeah, we did. Uh, actually, we covered uh, uh, the, the whole country and Scotland talking to uh, ev everyone uh, in the over there. <laughs> and now you're here in London, and we're and very, very, London. very excited to have you. Hi, um, hello. Now, back to you, starts on Sunday. And now, we've kind of been told that this isn't the missing Series 3, is it? So what are the, the sort of the differences, would you say, between the um, missing and where we pick up with Baptiste? Um, I, I will say that, you know, as much as uh, season one of The Missing was very different from season two uh, of The Missing, uh, 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 Baptist was uh, sort of uh, the link from uh, the season one and the season two. And uh, uh, the case was completely different with another ensemble of amazing actors. Um, and then um, uh, they, the brothers, Williams, who wrote who produced uh, and, and wrote with a BBC and New Picture, decided they will stay uh, at this uh, uh, s with this second series. Didn't want to go for a third one, thinking it was nice. They, it was huge the success. It was big, massive. Yeah. both series absolutely huge. Yeah, big wave. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they wanted to stay there, you know, and they produced Liar, Relic, uh, uh, wrote Liar, Liar and Relic, produced Fleabag. You know, they were uh, uh, growing. As a as a team and the producers also, and uh, eventually uh, when they started promote their uh, production, they realized everyone is talking about this character, asking why is not there to solve the case, you know, and uh, we we want him. So there was a like a strong desire of a, of a, uh, um, to have a Baptist uh, back. So they came and asked, would you? Um, would you uh, come with us and uh, work as uh, Julien Baptiste on, the, <laughs> on a spin-off uh, of uh, the series? We will call it Baptiste. And uh, I'd say uh, Baptiste, this series today, is uh, has the same DNA. So it's it's a different case, but we, we are more with him, actually. The family is more uh, involved in the intrigue, and uh, they, they, they are in danger, so... Uh, uh, Julien really has to to go for it, but it's the same uh, same team, a great ensemble with uh, Tom Hollander, uh, Jessica Rain, um, uh, Alex Icareanu. We have great Flemish actors. It's an amazing piece of uh, very creative people with the brothers BBC and the. Uh, and two brother picture. Am I right in thinking that there's a little bit of sort of difference in the way the stories are kind of told compared to the missing? Because the missing it was sometimes a little bit hard to keep up with, wasn't it? Because there was about three different timelines ongoing. But that's all changing for this series, right? Yeah, the difference uh, we can say there is a difference now. It's a six-hour, uh, not eight-hour uh, 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 series, and it's more on a straight line. There is some flashbacks, but it's going uh, over uh, eight days, so there is a uh, quite a um, um, a strong pace, mm. pace, pace, and there is a, a urgency uh, in the the feel uh, of the action. Well, did um, you saw you mentioned the brothers there, the Williams brothers, who are fantastic writers and they're responsible for other great shows too. But was it always the intention that Baptiste would always land this this other series when the second series of The Missing finished? Uh, they didn't know really, you know. They uh, it always was uh, one step after the other. So uh, I guess uh, with this one, it's a, it's a piece in itself, you know, about this Baptist we are seeing. It's uh, season zero. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see where we start, you know. And uh, I guess uh, if it's well nurtured, uh, they kept saying, I love this expression, uh, uh, this character has a lot of skeletons in his closet. 
and uh, still a lot of things to be to be solved, you know. And uh, as uh, is a real uh, man, you know, is is um, uh, somebody they know. Um, and uh, so there is a lot of things they want to, to develop uh, with, with him. So we are nurturing the future of uh, Baptist, uh, the series. Always with uh, great people, you know, it's a choir. It's everyone, uh, every character, every actor has a really st strong journey to deal with. And, uh, and Baptiste is like sort of uh, uh, wandering around all those uh, <laughs> uh, com um, complex uh, souls and tries to... Uh, Weaving his way around. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's take a look at him, him in action. I think we have the trailer for the new series right here. <laughs> that was pretty intense. Pretty intense stuff. Now, your character, last time we saw him, he wasn't particularly in a very good way, was he? But spoiler alert, obviously, everyone, he survived the ordeal at the end of the last series. Where do we find him when we pick up with him? And what is this case that he's investigating this time around? Uh, he survived the surgery he went through that he took a lot of time on, on season two to, to go for. And uh, so when we start, uh, he's just enjoying to be alive. Uh, he's happy. They are in Amsterdam with the family, with uh, Celia, his wife, who's uh, still there to uh, uh, support this uh, stubborn uh, husband. And it's Anastasia Ile who plays it. And uh, uh, with the family, Omar Baroud, who is his uh, uh, son-in-law, and the Camichot, who is his daughter, they take care of the grandchild. And, uh, and they are a bit heavy, you know. We can feel that this young couple would like them maybe less <laughs> Oppressing, but there are so much, you know, sometimes uh, to be in love can be uh, oppressing. Too much love is not good. <laughs> so we have to be careful to stay back a little bit. But eventually there is this uh, chief of police uh, uh, in Amsterdam called, um, is uh, Ma Martha. She happens to be uh, the ex-girlfriend uh, that Martha, that uh, Celia didn't know. And she's trying to get uh, uh, Julien involved uh, in a case she's working on. So he's not, he doesn't really want to to go for it, so she manages to to talk him into that uh, that case, and eventually also Celia uh, sort of pushes him. He's not sure. He he's is a bit afraid. Will will I be able to do it? Do I still have the the um, the skill for it? But soon he will realize that uh, he wants to to take the bull by by the horns you know? <laughs> and um, and uh, and the instinct uh, are still still there he's still very switched on despite all of what he went through in the last series which is which is good to know um, but the character is so sort of enduringly popular now he's sort of landed his own spin-off series why do you think he's really resonated with everyone why do you think people love this character so much I, I mean, I think, I don't know, maybe there is a lot of empathy uh, in him, he's wise, uh, he's re you can rely on him, he's a kind of man, uh, he's uh, not uh, like a heavy macho, you know. He, he's very charming, he's, I think. He's charming, he's not afraid of, uh, uh, his, you know, it's a mixture of masculine, feminine side, you know, there is something uh, very... Uh, um, very uh, uh, human and dear in the way he's he's wise, uh, not afraid to uh, share his feelings. You know, talk to people, listen to them. There is a lot of patience. Uh, he's ready to to deal with every every problem. I guess uh, he's sexy. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> Much like the actor himself, indeed. Yes. Right. <laughs> Uh, now, I want to talk to you about Tom Hollander, because every series you're joined by sort of a really big sort of acting name. First series you had James Nesbitt, then you had Keely Hawes, now obviously you've got Tom. Where does he slot into the puzzle and what's his character about? Uh, first of all, I have to say I'm really lucky uh, uh, to to play with them. It's so uh, fantastic this uh, this uh, gift to be embraced by uh, by th by those guys. I loved to share uh, the my experience as an actor with them as much as Roger Alam also who is a great Gosh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. colleague, you know, and um, Laura Fraser also. So. Um, well, Tom is a, he has a really uh, a tough uh, journey to go through. He's a very complex 
complexe character. We never know if he's good, if he's bad. Uh, Julien gets a little, a bit lost in uh, in him. That's why we can listen to that uh, line where he says, "I've been looking uh, uh, all my life for missing people, and maybe to uh, uh, try to dig into and look for their souls is a, is a stretch too far." Suddenly, he has to deal with that. So, where is it from? Am I uh, misjudging? You know, suddenly he feels unsure about himself, about the way he feels maybe I'm not as quick as usual. So he's taken into a, a journey that uh, um, uh, uh, Tom's character is like a roller coaster going through. You know, he's uh, always like running after himself. And uh, eventually, uh, um, um, Julien will help him in, in that uh, uh, journey. Well, actually, let's take a look at the moment that they first meet, because this is where it all begins. Let's take a look. Now, we didn't get to see it in that clip there, but the, the series is set across like some amazing locations, isn't it? Um, where, where did you film for Baptiste? We, we filmed uh, mainly in Amsterdam. Uh, it's set in the uh, in this uh, lot. Of, uh, I mean, the the main uh, the red district. You know, it's a it's a district where uh, you have a, a lot of prostitution. There we and go. We uh, can see on screen there. Yeah, there you are. women on windows. <laughs> it's quite uh, quite uh, special. But what's uh, what <laughs> it is? I mean, well, I didn't see any men actually there on the windows. Um, maybe some other uh, red. Tucked district. around a different corner. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but what's, what was amazing actually is that, you know, there is those streets and the c canals there uh, and buses uh, vomiting, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, tons of tourists just walking there. I was really surprised. I thought it would be a place where people would, would walk and hide themselves, look from, with the corner of their eyes, but everybody's like that looking. At the, <laughs> it's so uh, surprising. Uh, but then we, we deal... With uh, with the underworld uh, of that place, because uh, the um, he he sort of looking for a missing woman, but then he will realize it when he, he finds her quite quickly um, that it's getting more complicated. Now, what's this story about bicycles that I hear during filming? Because I hear that there's some infamous story from from your time on set together. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it's because the produ production kept uh, telling us, uh, be careful with the bikes, be careful with the bikes, look uh, on the left, look on the right, especially for the English people uh, also, because it's on the, the other, way, other around. way around. <laughs> but even for us, suddenly, but I was thinking, why be careful with the bikes, you know? And then I started walking in the streets and I realized that it was really dangerous because it more dangerous than the cars, actually. They poof, well, bike here, poof, you turn your head, another <laughs> one here, and they don't care. You know, you really have to pay attention if you don't they really run over over you so eventually you end up um, biking yourself you know? <laughs> it's not a way to go is it really <laughs> nice way nice way to go <laughs> do you get to see like much of the cities that you film in like i guess in the filming schedule it must be quite sort of hectic is there much time for you to sort of go out and explore and, and see stuff uh well, I mean, actually, uh, when, when you shoot, you, you, you see things, uh, you know, without really asking for. So we saw a lot of uh, different uh, um, colors and type of places. But I have to say, with the, the amount of work I have to do uh, on the language, most of my time I spend it uh, on the table with the coach who puts the gloves with me to prepare the scenes and talk through them and talk loud what I think about it. But I was lucky to have a flat with a huge window window and while we were working for hours when I was not shooting I could see the the port of uh, Antwerpen uh, with amazing uh, boats crossing big boats little boats veal boats all sort of uh, uh, factories uh, floating it was really a uh, uh, incredible and I realized that to be in a city with water makes you feel really uh, quiet you understand why the Nordic people living in this kind of city are uh, so um, uh, Zen in a way you know you say about Zen but you had to do a lot of running on this series I believe didn't you which Baptiste carries a bit of a limp as well so I'm guessing that must have been extra difficult to do all this running, yes. right yes yes but I was glad to be able to to uh, to do it, you know, and show that uh, you can be uh, 
uh, of a certain age and still uh, really <laughs> go for it, you know, doing uh, like 10 takes and different angles and still go for it. <laughs> well, the role of James Bond might be open soon if Daniel Craig leaves it. Are you, is this a, is this a pitch for Bond? Well, I don't know. I, mean, I, I was in the Bond movie, actually. I played the defense minister, uh, um, Dmitry Mishkin. He was a Russian, uh, Russian uh, <laughs> min minister, minister. Um, you are obviously, you spend a lot of your time living in Paris now, I believe. But when you're here in the UK, do you enjoy it? Do you sort of enjoy being back here? Well, back here in the UK? Not back here, but you know. Yes, what I, mean. I do. I do, you know, and I think uh, I will come more and more and more try to discover more the city and go uh, outside London also. England is made of uh, so many uh, different uh, uh, colors and type of uh, accent and, uh, and uh, origin is really uh, um, attractive. And I believe you're a big West End fan as well, is that right? You're, you're sort of productions in the West End. I, I, I worked, oh, um, I, I would love to be uh, in, in a show on the, on the West End. I, I'm dreaming to have a producer or director coming to me and say, hey, we need this uh, <laughs> French guy in, in our show with a good part to share with uh, great actors here. And also uh, would love to come with my band and do a, a concert also. We would love that. What's your band called? The caretakers. <laughs> <laughs> we should have got I, you I on for a musical I long time stuff. ago in, uh, in Cornwall. I did a movie, maybe you, you should look at it. It was really funny with Brenda Blethyn. It's called uh, Saving Grace. Ah, you remember? That's ringing a lot of bells in the room. Yeah, yeah, it was quite a... Uh, uh, but it was great, great movie. I really enjoyed So I, I know a nice area also there. It was fantastic, this place. Uh, what's the dream role? Any shakes, maybe a bit of Shakespeare? I don't know if there is a role for a French guy in Shakespeare, but could you have your arm twisted? Uh, <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> well. We'll take that as a maybe. Maybe, right? What, to play Shakespeare? Yeah, well, not no. Shakespeare himself, but. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I could play Bartleby. <laughs> uh, one Doesn't last question before we not. go. I, I know a lot of people will be wondering if they can pick up with Baptiste if they haven't seen Missing One and Two. They absolutely can, can't they? Definitely, as I said, you know, it's completely different. Uh, 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 for those who saw the missing, the Baptist is there. There is uh, will take everyone by the hand and uh, uh, through uh, through uh, uh, the, the the intrigue, uh, they will have to uh, they will enjoy as much as they did before. And the one who didn't see will discover uh, a new. Uh, a new pleasure. Well, I for one excitement. am very, very excited. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, episode one of Baptiste hits BBC One this Sunday at 9 p.m. So make sure you check it out. We'll also be back here at 6.30 when Simon Atkins will be chatting to New Hope Club. I think we've got some fans in the house. Thank uh, you. So make sure you join us then. Uh, in the meantime, give it up one last time for Checky Cario, everyone. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> 